In this video, we use our laser machine to create handsome Ford Bronco faux leather keychains. I have some friends that have a new Bronco on pre-order, so I thought I'd surprise them with some keychains, since it looks like it might be the closest they ever come to actually getting the car. It's also an opportunity to test out some faux leather we bought and have had sitting around gathering dust. With the exception of a three ring binder we recently engraved, we've never actually worked with any kind of leather. I honestly didn't know if we'd even end up with content for a video. However, I was overall pretty happy with the results and my laser crafting experience leveled up by about 0.0001%. The keychain job shown being engraved and then cut on the laser was done four times so that I could try different coloring and sewing techniques. I had noticed that if I folded the two halves of the keychain together, it was rather flat and boring looking. So I went and cut a circle out of the same material on the laser and then glued it inside to sort of puff up the keychain a little. I glued it in place using some E6000 craft glue. I'm sure there's a more appropriate glue for leather out there, but this is what I had handy. I slipped a keyring over the material and then began sewing. When it came to sewing, I clearly had no idea what I was doing, but I did my best. I guess those home ec classes I was forced to take in high school didn't really stick with me too well. It has been like 35 plus years though. I didn't know the proper thing to do with the leather's unfinished edges. I only knew I didn't like the way it looked. So I took a black sharpie to color them in. Boo! Yeah, you're probably cringing watching me do this, but I think it helped with the overall look. If you have suggestions what I should have done, please put them in the comments. For the second keychain, I planned on coloring in the engraving, but first I wanted to address that puffiness issue. I didn't think the last one had quite enough padding to it, so this time I glued two round pieces together to be used as padding and hopefully make the keychain look a little fuller. I wanted to try to paint fill the engraving to see how well it would work. I planned on using a gray thread, so I thought silver acrylic paint would complement it. I brushed the paint straight onto the entire surface. I then started going over the top with the brush a bit wet to try to remove some of the extra paint. Finally, I went over the entire thing with a slightly moistened paper towel. The painting seemed to work really well. The metallic paint left neat little sparkles in the texture of the leather, though I assume those would wear off eventually from handling. After seeing what the unfinished edges look like on the last keychain, I decided to preemptively color in the edges that might show with a gray sharpie this time. The two leather discs I previously glued together were then glued into the keychain. Once again, I showed off my lack of sewing skills. The extra leather padding I added didn't cause any issue sewing, which was good. I think two pieces was just enough padding. Overall, I was pretty happy with the look of this version. I definitely liked the painted engraving better than the natural version.
The next keychain was made exactly the same as the last one. The only difference is that I wanted to see how it would look with black thread and with the engraving painted black. I started this one again by gluing two more discs together for the padding. I used the same basic technique to paint in the engraving. Just brushed on the black acrylic paint and then worked it off the surface. The black really made a nice contrast in color to the brown leather. I tried coloring the edges and areas that might show with the black paint. This didn't really go so well. It was easier to just go back to my trusty Sharpie. I then glued in the padding. Something I didn't mention before, but I only glued these discs to one side of the keychain. I figured the glue was just to keep them centered in place. Once everything was sewed up, I figured movement of the padding wasn't going to be an issue. Once again, it was sewing time. Nothing to see here. One thing I will mention though is that I haven't shown my tying off the thread at the end. I just couldn't video it as I had to put my face inches away from the keychain to see it better, and I don't think anybody wants to look up my nose. I wouldn't. I just ran the needle under the previous stitches inside the loopy part of the leather and was able to get it knotted in there. Nothing fancy. I was really happy with the way the black version came out. So for the final keychain, I would not only paint the engraving black, but I would use the same black thread, but sew it differently. Once again, I started with gluing two circles together that would be inserted as padding. The keychain's engraving was painted black again. You'll notice that this keychain is identical to the previous ones with one exception. I had lasered out double the number of holes for sewing. I glued the padding inside the same as the previous keychains. You'll notice that this time I had made some marks on the inside of the keychain to help me orient where to start sewing and which holes lined up on both sides. See, I learned a little as I went along. Yippee! So for this keychain, I tried sewing what's called a whip stitch. Honestly, I didn't know what the stitch was called until somebody else told me. I just knew what it should look like. If you've been noticing that white stuff on the threads, that's wax. The beginner's leather sewing kit we got had four thread spools in it and they were all waxed. There'll be a link to this kit and the leather we use in the description below in case you're interested. Anyways, I don't know if using this kind of thread was really necessary. Maybe it made it easier for the threads to stay tight while sewing? I really don't know. I think unwaxed thread would have been fine as the holes were a smaller diameter than the thread and would have probably kept everything together nicely. Regardless, I wasn't a big fan. It got little bits of white in all the engravings that I had to brush and pick out later.
Thanks for watching. Let us know in the comments what you think and if you've ever thought about doing a project like this. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to get notified of future projects. We have more projects coming soon. Stay tuned.